utterly incredible. <laughs> Seven nil at Anfield. Um, Don't come to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Where has that Liverpool been? Well, we talked about what a big game this is across all of England. It's the biggest, biggest fixture. And I tell you what, I, I did. I, I thought, I said this to you off camera, I thought Liverpool were going to do it today because Anfield and the cop, they recognise big moments, big occasion, big nights. They recognise that and that place was electric. And maybe that's what they needed, just to know that this team still has it in them. What's so incredible about this game that we love, Robbie, <clears throat> is how quickly oh. everything can change. Can you remember last weekend as well, you talked about the Man United situation, winning the League Cup and the celebrations to that. Liverpool at Crystal Palace last Saturday was so flat, I've never seen them so flat. It's almost like a season's worth of frustrations were unleashed today. And we always talk about, well, we have in recent times, about front three players mm -hmm. at Liverpool. They've, there's been a magnificent front three that's done break up, of course, when Saido Mane left. How about this front three, by the mm -hmm. way? How about mm -hmm. that? How about that for an exhibition of finishing, of creativity, of incredible finishes, incredible understanding and movement, particularly between Darwin Nunes and Gakpo. They switch positions all the time. All of them scored two goals in the game. Mm -hmm. Firmino comes on and gets an extra one as well. I mean, it, obviously, it shows what Liverpool are capable of. Sadly for their fans, they haven't been able to do that week in, week out. But the contrast, and, and, and given what we've been saying about Man United, about what the manager's been saying about mental toughness and, and having winners at the club and all this, which we've all agreed with, you still can get that. The game is astonishing. That was an astonishing game. I mean, as, as the guy said in commentary, like, where did that come from? Seven. Wow. Are we seeing the fruition of the transition from Mane, Salah yeah. and Firmino to, as Robbie says, Gakpo, Nunez yeah. and Salah. I think the frustration for, for Klopp and for the Liverpool fans is ultimately when, when Liverpool are at their best, it's energy. You talked about the flat performance last week. It's energy. It's a, midfield, it's a midfield three. It still looks like Henderson and Fabinho are still two of the best. Harvey Elliott, they got a performance from. But they're at their best when they're flying forward. The fullbacks are going forward and the front three is interchanging. This front three does look like they have a bit of rhythm. Step back for United. How well, big? You know, you, Reality we've, check? We've, give a to we've done a ton of praise to Eric Ten Hag and he deserves it for what he's done at this moment in time. We can't ignore what happened today and, and the positional situation that nobody understood when you've got the league's best scoring, great form in Marcus Rashford. I think at some point near the end of the game, you know, like the fewest touches of any outfield mm -hmm. player that started the game. We wanted to see him, Graham, so wanted to see him playing on the left-hand side, attacking Trent Alexander-Arnold. We never saw it. Mm. I don't get that. Um, listen, maybe explain something, but it, yeah, an awful day for Manchester United, yeah. We'll await the post-match mm. interviews, but we've got to take you back to Peter Drury and Graham Lasso. Gentlemen, have you taken a breath? Where do you <laughs> begin with what a story? Story of the, One of the stories of the season so far, that game. Yeah, uh, Rebecca, I'd love to be able to offer you something intelligent, <laughs> but uh, we are still slightly staggered by it, aren't we? Can, can you, in some sense, Graham, whether from Liverpool's perspective or indeed United's, rationalise that? Um, I think the fact they scored six goals in the second half, I had to ask you what was the score at, at <laughs> half-time. <laughs> One nil. Um, and it was a combination of things. I think fundamentally the theme of the game for me was Liverpool's desire, urgency and will to win outstripped Manchester United. I think when you set that tone in this sort of game, you get the crowd behind you, you've got that urgency and that, that friction between you and your opponent. That gives you a, a, a fighting chance. And then the quality, as the guys were saying in the studio, the link-up play today, it all came together beautifully for Manchester, uh, for Liverpool. And namely, that, that, that goal, that Gapco second goal, I just thought was a thing of beauty. And were United poor? They were, were they poor. just wiped away? No, they were poor. They were second best to everything. In their heads, they weren't as good. They weren't up for the fight as much as Liverpool were. The, um, I think as things started going against them, rather than consolidating and trying to build some, something from a base, they lost their shape, they became reckless, they became emotional. Fernandez was really poor. You don't want somebody like that in your team, sort of going around causing all these little problems around the pitch and then not working for the team as well. So they let themselves down today, but look, they're a good side, they're in great shape generally, United. They'll learn a lot from this and they'll respond, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they will.
a once-in-a-lifetime scoreline, Rebecca, clearly. But one timeless truth, I think, shone through it all, that this place is one mighty asset for Liverpool Football Club. Anfield today was exceptional. Um, and I, I just hope you got some sort of sense of the mood here. It, it was remarkable. We did. We absolutely did. Peter, Graham, thank you very much indeed. Don't forget, we still got one game coming your way this weekend. It's Monday afternoon football. It's tomorrow. It's Brentford in ninth against high-flying Fulham in seventh, who themselves, if they win tomorrow, will move above Newcastle and into sixth position. Our coverage begins on USA Network tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Well, today, we've seen the Liverpool, which has largely been missing this season. What a performance from Gakpo, Nunez, Salah and co. As Eric Ten Hag comes back down to earth with a bump with Manchester United's worst ever Premier League defeat. Stay with us. Amazing day for Liverpool, amazing day for Mo Salah. He is now Liverpool's all-time top Premier League scorer. A couple of goals today took him above the great Rob Powder. Let's go to the tunnel at Anfield and hear from Mo, from Mo Salah and Captain Jordan Henderson. Um, something that we've been missing for a while, of course, but I think today um, you could see the energy levels and everything was was back. And to be fair, the last few Premier League games have showed um, with the results, clean, clean sheet that we've kept, we're on the right path, and today was a proper performance. Mo, do you echo those sentiments? Did you feel it was coming? And just how special was that today? Yeah, it's a very special to win a game like that uh, with that result. But uh, in the same time, I don't want that to give us like we go to the next game with overconfidence or something. We just need to to stay humble and just play and win the games because we also we are not in the position we wanted to be. Um, but hopefully, that give us a good push and we make us keep winning. One position that you personally, and you are now Liverpool's record-breaking all-time leading scorer in the Premier League. You've just gone past Robbie Paola. What does that mean to you? Uh, it's, it's very special. I can't lie. This record, this record in, was in my mind since I came here. I think after my first season, I was like all like chasing that record. Uh, so get it today against United with that result is, is unbelievable. So yeah, I'm, I'm going home, celebrate with the family, and have uh, chamomile tea and sleep. <laughs> Even more special, one was with the right foot. Not many of them with the right foot, have they? Yeah, well, that was a good one. I think uh, I just like innocent in like just shoot the ball. Like, the ball was in a good position, so I just shot it one time, and uh, yeah, I had uh, like to go in, uh, in the right direction. Seventh heaven then for Liverpool today. Two goals each for this new era front three. Salah, Gakpo and Nunez all star at Anfield as Eric Ten Hag witnesses his worst day in the job. Plus a really good game at the city ground in the race to avoid relegation earlier on. Four goals, points shared between Forrest and Everton. We bring you it all. Coming next in Goal Zone. See you in a sec. This is Goal Zone presented by Toyota. What a day. 11 goals in the Premier League. Forest 2, Everton 2 in the big one at the bottom. And then, yep, that is not a misprint. It is 7-0, the final score at Anfield. 7-0, Liverpool beat Manchester United. Time now for our Premier League update. And here in the studio alongside me, Rebecca Lowe, Tim Howard, Robbie Musto, just digesting what went on at Anfield. Still digesting it. Let's show you, if you missed it, just how Liverpool took Manchester United apart after United had a couple of chances. Yeah, I mean, the, the first half was, was competitive. Both teams looked dangerous in that final third here. Just Bruno Fernandes can't quite direct that. It's not an easy header from that angle. Alisson looked like he might have had it covered anyway. We get another one here, Rebecca. Luke Shaw plays a really good ball into Marcus Rashford, who doesn't make good contact there. Just watch the contact of the ball. He just doesn't really get it in the middle of his foot, and it's an easy save for the goalkeeper. Just before the break, that's when the breakthrough came. Well, these front three players are Liverpool, and the understanding and the movement between them all is pretty good, and they all link here. This time, Nunes is in the centre, Gakpo's to the outside. He comes infield, gets that touch inside, and then there's a lovely bit of space there. The goalkeeper's just, the vision's taken away, and, and Robertson's ball here is a little bit of it, just class there just to realize in a split second that Fred's just overcommitted. He's just trying to intercept the ball on the outside. It's spotted. Robertson plays it inside him and Gakpo. Really good work coming in from that left-hand side and finding the far corner. Into the second half and it's two, just two minutes after the whistle. Well, it was and uh, Mo Salah involved here again. Just that ball is fizzed across. It's Harvey Elliott. 
that gets the ball back is it just get, Luke Shaw does a poor job of clearing the ball and it's right there, right in the, the centre of the goal this time. Uh, Darwin Nunez from the left come to the inside and gets an easy goal. Gakpo with his second, then Liverpool third. Really, no, this is a really good one. Really, really good. Again, the front three allowed. They're given a licence to, to interchange and to move. And this is a difficult finish. That's really difficult from there. Running to the ball at speed. Having to take it first time. David De Gea is only a yard away and still manages to avoid the goalkeeper and put in the back of the net. Stunning goal. 3 0 on 50 minutes. On 66, it was 4 Tim. Yeah, and Mo Salah here with his weaker right foot, but you wouldn't know it. Falls calmly to him. And that goal there, Taz Robert Fowler for most Premier League goals in club history. You just see there, it's a clean strike. He knows it, cool and calm, 4-0. Four, four and then it was five from a wide set, set piece. Jordan Henderson just gets to it first. Doesn't get closed down, spins it in. And I think it's a really good header from Darwin Nunez. He goes and attacks it. Yes, it's a little bit behind him, but you just look there. He makes contact as it's behind him. And makes it really, really easy. His second goal of the day, making it 5 0. And then Mo Salah, this is the record breaking goal here. United were incredibly poor. This summed them up. Can't clear the ball. I mean, Luke Shaw there has an opportunity to do so. And Mo Salah says, Thank you very much. There's the record. Chirk comes off. Big celebrations. And substitute Roberto Firmino from a really tight angle. Nothing in it. Makes it 7-0. This, this was United all day. Just kind of out of sorts. Big, big victory for Liverpool. Out of sorts. And now, we thought it was just the worst ever Premier League defeat. Look at this. We've dug a little deeper. Manchester United's worst losses in club history, right? Four times they've lost 7-0. The other three times in the 1920s and 1930s. Until today, losing 7-0 at Anfield. What's Bruno Fernandes got to say about it? Bruno, you've had a few moments there in the change rooms. Um, is it possible to explain exactly what happened there today? Oh, the standard was not uh, our, at our level. Uh, that's why we didn't, win, uh, we didn't get anything from the game. I think first half we did really well. We controlled the game. We had, we had the most chances probably. Uh, Liverpool find the goal. Uh, obviously, we came to the second half and we conceded, uh, we conceded too many goals from, uh, from our mistakes and from... Uh, from positions where we should be aware of what Liverpool wanted for the, from the game. Like you say, at, at half-time, I mean, even at 1-0, recently it felt like United would have and, and normally did come back from games like that. So what changed in that second half then? Well, as I said, we did too, too many mistakes. That is not at our standard, our level, the, the level we used to be. Um, we gave we gave too much space away for them to counter. We knew how uh, how, how good they, they could be in, in a counter attack. Uh, it's one of the best weapons that they have, and uh, we didn't control that uh, good enough. There's been an awful lot of games recently. There's been four matches since your last Premier League game alone. It, is that starting to catch up now? The amount of games that are coming and quite intense games as well, including that cup final. How we can't use that as a, as an excuse. If you want to to play as for this top club, uh, being in the, the, the all the competitions, fight for all the competitions, we have to we have to play all the games, and we have to we have to want to play more and more often. So we we can use that as a, as an excuse. It's just uh, our standard was not um, good enough, uh, and uh, and that's it. We're awaiting the thoughts of Eric Ten Hag. For our 2% of 90 highlights presented by Wells Fargo, we take you to the city ground. Huge run at the bottom between Forrest and Everton. Tim, penalty early doors. Yeah, it was. And you see here the two Everton midfielders making the box. Corey and Onana. When Neil gets onto the ball, Shelby just dangles a leg. John Brooks, referee, is standing right over it. It's a clear penalty. Shelby just real lazy as he dangles that leg. And Demar Gray... Club's leading goal scorer steps up, smashes home his fourth goal of the season, making it 1-0 to Everton. That was a big moment. The Forest responds through Brennan Johnson. Just watch Gibbs White here, drops deep. Lovely combination with Chris Wood. Simple one, two, gets a shot away. Pickford does well to make the initial save, but just can't scramble back. And Brennan Johnson levels at 1-1. That's after 19 minutes. Ten minutes later, Everton go back in front, Rob. Well, they do, and uh, Decore, I thought, was excellent in midfield. Inside the penalty box, they put, they put the ball in there. There's lots of blue shirts in there, and it falls nicely, and he's not going to miss from four yards out to put Everton back in front at 2-1. Into the second half, here's the equaliser. Well, Brennan, 
Well, Brennan Johnson, we know about him. We know how good he was last season in the championship. And the touch there is beautiful. And that finish as well with his weaker side is, is superb. Just in the details here, uh, Everton's midfield there. Decoy, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a great ball, but the two midfield players run ahead of it. Now, that's a mistake. One of them has got to stand still. If one player stands still, it's a simple ball. Plus, you know, if they do give it away, he's in and around the area here of the goal scorer, maybe to put a challenge in. So, uh, midfield-wise, the detail was off there. What a game from Brendan Johnson saving Forrest and getting them a point. Those were our 2% and 90 highlights sponsored by the Wells Fargo Active Cash Card. That is real life ready. How does it affect the relegation picture then that game at the city ground well Everton could have been out of the bottom three had they held on to that lead that they had twice instead they stay in the relegation zone level on points with Leeds but they've played a game more than most of the teams around them elsewhere Forrester in 14th they're four points above that drop zone but look how tight it is from Palace in 12th all the way to Bournemouth in 20th still just six points between them what about the top half? Will Chelsea win this weekend but stay in 10th position? Newcastle all of a sudden find themselves in 6th place. And if Fulham win tomorrow, Fulham jump above Newcastle as well. Liverpool in 5th with a game in hand on Tottenham and three points behind them. Spurs in 4th despite that defeat. United stay in 3rd with City and Arsenal five points clear. Here's Jurgen Klopp. You can put that into words, what your side have just done. <laughs> no words. Spectacular football game. Eh? So outstanding. The start of the game was already was really exactly what we needed. It was super front foot, super lively, super active. Um, played top football uh, against the team in form. And um, then first half got a bit wild in a way we didn't want it. They came a bit, got a bit of foot into the game, but then we scored this incredible goal late in the first half. Incredible. What a pass. What a finish. So fantastic. Yeah, and second half, um, obviously, the start was pretty good, the finish was pretty good, everything was pretty good. Yeah, that's football, eh? it can happen. How I said before the game, um, United plays a super season. We are not really happy with our season so far, but that doesn't mean anything for the game because you still have to, to play this one. And today we were the clear better side for this moment. Um, um, and we got very important three points for us, so feels good. Is that far more, more than important three points, though? The manner of the three points on so many fronts? Yeah, it's important as well that we really perform, that all the guys up front score, then come, Bobby comes on and scores. Jogo could have scored. I'm not sure if it's a penalty or not. But um, So that's all very important. Top performances, all top performances today. Everybody who played was really in the game. That's very important for us, of course, because there are still, I don't know exactly, 13 games or so to come. So a lot of points to, to go for, and that's exactly what we want. Um, and so, yes, for tonight, it was perfect. Well, you said at the start of the week, I want to give our season a little push this week. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that was the push we wanted. But, um, That's more than a push. Yeah, no, well, I don't know. It's, it just puts us in the right direction. That's how it is. We are getting close. Everybody has to, to feel us, has to know we are still around. It was not the case for a while. And um, now tonight, we, we really uh, was a proper show of what we could be um, and what we can be and that's what we have to be um, from now on and um, as we don't talk about the scoreline we just talk about the performance and um, so that's really really helpful if you see now the, the the goal difference I'm not sure I think plus 19 or something like that that looks like a goal difference first time <laughs> um, and yeah how is that for tonight perfect but we all know um, Bournemouth lost yesterday against Arsenal in the last second pretty much so they fight for staying in the league that will not be a uh, walk in the park or whatever it will be tough as well and we have to make sure that we are ready for that Mo Salah broke the record today <laughs> you doffed your cap yes, to him well deserved yeah <laughs> what can you say about his achievement well it's insane it's insane 129 goals is absolutely insane what a number and I don't even know exactly the number in how many goals he was involved with setting it up today at least one if I'm right um, so he really special he's a special player very special player we appreciate him now already but in the future looking back people will realize wow we witnessed something really special. We certainly did. Don't forget, we have so much on offer, especially on our NBC Sports YouTube channel, along with Premier League Update. We have news and analysis from Pro Soccer Talk on the website. And on the YouTube channel, we've got The Lowdown, the Two Robbies podcast, and plenty more. Make sure you check out the NBC Sports YouTube channel.
Manchester United's worst ever defeat jointly, their worst loss since 1931. This is not the Manchester United we've seen since the start of the season. A massive reality check for Eric Ten Hag, who we're going to hear from next. Mo Salah with two goals today. He, along with Nunez and Gakpo, ripped Manchester United apart. 7-0, just seven days after United lifted their first trophy for six years. Let's hear from the United manager, Eric Ten Hag. Well, Eric, how do you, how do you start to explain that? Yeah. I think we played decent first half. Uh, one mistake in organization just before halftime, but I think it wasn't weird if we were in the lead in halftime. And in second half, uh, it was not us. Uh, it was not our standards. Um, we didn't play as a team. There were 11 players on the pitch, but that uh, not um, cope together. And yeah, then you get this, and that's unprofessional. Are you angry about it, about that second half performance? Yes, definitely. I am surprised because I have seen the last weeks, months, a uh, team what is resilient, what is determined, uh, what is really had a winning attitude. Uh, second half, we hadn't a winning attitude at all. What in particular went wrong, or was it a case of pretty much everything went wrong? Yes, we didn't stick to the plan. We lose our heads. Um, and and we didn't, our, uh, we didn't do our jobs and <laughs> defense transition and you know how good they are in transition <laughs> but we're just not running with our uh, our opponents we didn't track back and yeah, that's really unprofessional this sort of thing doesn't really happen to manchester united what are you looking for now as a reaction what do you want to see in the next few days uh, we we have seen in the past that we can set uh, we can bounce back uh, after Brentford, after Man City game, but definitely this is a, a strong setback and yeah, this is uh, unacceptable and we let the fans down and I'm really uh, disappointed and angry about it. Is it a reality check or is it a, a one-off you hope? Oh, it's a reality check, <laughs> but uh, we, we have to take this um, strong, uh, it's a strong message what we get and yeah, we have to to overthink this and what happened exactly and take our lessons out. A reality check, we let the fans down, he called them unprofessional. Yeah. You like it? I like it. I like it. He said they didn't stick to the game plan. I, I believe that because I think that they ended up playing on emotion and chasing the game after the second goal went in. I mean, at 2-0, you're Manchester United, you'll be able to get back in the game if you stick to the game plan and you stay disciplined. That being said, I think it's a blip. He talked about he, he recruits winners and he wants win, winning mentality. These things happen. They've been on a fantastic run. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt more than most because it's Liverpool. They're going to dust themselves down and go again. But this team is poised to make another run because they are, they are playing really well. This is a one-off. Is it a one-off? Um, we'll see. I, I, I'm not so sure that it is a one-off. I think it is a reality check. I think there's been a, a lot, a lot of praise given to him and this team and this club. They're back to winning ways. i got to think there's a little bit of complacency in today. Maybe some of the players think they've arrived and some of the new ones that's found out winning and this is what it's like and I'm great and everything else. It is a reality check <clears throat> about the quality of this league, about going to Anfield in this, this derby. Uh, the manager will learn a lot about the league, his team and himself after that. Gentlemen, brilliant stuff. Thank you very much.